a very warm welcome to all the students with this session we are going to begin our discussion on the classification of the animal kingdom we are going to discuss a general account of the classification various basis on which the animal kingdom has been classified the details of phylum protozoa with some of its important examples in the classification of the animals we group together similar animals on the basis of their properties the members of each group have some structural features in common actually the practice and science of classification is known as taxonomy this classification of the animal kingdom is a morphological classification in which similar animals are grouped together on the basis of their structural properties so first of all let's get acquainted with the various taxonomical ranks that we are going to use in the classification of the animals the smallest group which is formed on the basis of similarity in structural properties of the animals constitutes a morphological species species with similar characteristics form a genus similarly associated genera constitute a family closely related families form an order a group of similar orders forms a class a group of classes is known as phylum group of phyla constitutes a subkingdom and the subkingdoms together constitute the animal kingdom the animal kingdom has been divided into two subkingdoms the first one is subkingdom protozoa and the other is subkingdom metazoa protozoa includes unicellular eukaryotic animals with a single phylum protozoa its examples are euglena amoeba paramecium etc we are going to discuss the details of phylum protozoa in this session the other sub kingdom is metazoa it includes multicellular animals on the basis of level of organization metazoa is further divided into two branches the first one is branch parazoa and the second is eumetazoa in parazoa the cells are loosely aggregated and do not form true tissues or organs it includes the phylum porifera whose examples are sponges the second branch is eumetazoa which includes truly multicellular organisms with organ and organ system level of organization it includes phyla coelenterata to chordata based on symmetry eumetazoa is further divided into two groups radiata and bilateria as the name indicates radiata includes those animals which are radially symmetrical they include phyla coelenterata and tenophora whereas the group bilateria includes those animals which are bilaterally symmetrical they include phylum platyhelminthes to phylum chordata Now let's see what exactly is radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. In radial symmetry, the animal can be divided into two identical halves by any of the radial planes along anterior posterior axis of the body. Whereas in bilateral symmetry, the animal can be divided into two identical halves only by a single plane. passing from dorsal side to ventral side and along the anterior posterior axis of the body so the animal can be divided only into two identical left and right parts animal kingdom has also been classified on the basis of germ layer germ layer which is also known as 
germinal epithelium is a group of cells formed during the animal embryogenesis. So on the basis of germness, animal kingdom has been divided into two types. One is diploblastic and the second is triploblastic. Diploblastic animals have two germless, the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm with a non-cellular layer known as mesoglia between the two. Diploblastic animals consist of phyla cilentrata. The other group is triploblastic. As the name indicates, it consists of three geomers, the outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and the inner endoderm. This group consists of animals from phylum platyhelminthes to phylum chordata. The animals included in bilateria have been further classified on the basis of the body cavity or coelome. A true coelome is a body cavity lying between the gut and the body wall and is lined with coelomic epithelium. Now depending upon the presence or absence of a true coelome, bilateria has been divided into three categories. First is a coelometer, second is pseudo coelometer and the third is u coelometer. A coelometer consists of those animals in which coelome is absent. Its example is phylum platyhelminthes. In pseudo coelometer, the animals consist of a false coelom, that is a body cavity which is not lined with coelomic epithelium. Its example is phylum Eschelminthes or Minotoda. The third category is U coelometa, which consists of a true coelom, that is a body cavity lying between the gut and the body wall and lined with coelomic epithelium. Now the coelom in U coelometer is of two types. First is schizo coelometer group which consists of those animals in which coelom develops by splitting up of mesoderm. It consists of phyla annelida, arthropoda and mollusca. The second group is anterocelous coelometer in which the coelom is enterocele, which originates by fusion of pouches of the embryonic gut, that is, archenteron. It consists of the rest of the phyla. If we look at the cross section of this oscillometer, we can see that there is this gut which originates from endoderm, outer ectoderm, and the middle muscle layer which originates from mesoderm, but there is no body cavity or coelom present. This is the cross section of a pseudo coelometer in which we can see a cavity which is present, but it is not a true coelom since it is not lined with. Coelomic epithelium. Therefore, this cavity is known as pseudocele. 